Hosea chapter 1. We're going to start reading that verse 1. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hosea chapter 1, verse 1. It says, the Lord God gave this message to Hosea. Some of your Bibles say the word of the Lord came to Hosea, son of Biri. During the years when Uzziah and Jotham and Ahaz and Hezekiah were the kings of Judah and Jeroboam, son of Jehoash, was the king of Israel. I'm doing good so far, man. I'm doing good. I'm Verse 2. <laughs> and when the Lord began speaking to Israel through Hosea, he said to him, Go and marry a prostitute. Wait a minute, what? Y'all Bible say the same thing, Mine says. Go and marry. I was reading it in the Message Bible. I wanted to read this in the Message Bible because in the Message Bible it says, Go and marry a whore. I feel like a little kid. I'm like, You're not supposed to say that. Go and marry a prostitute so that some of her children will be conceived in prostitution. This will illustrate how Israel has acted like a prostitute by turning against the Lord and worshiping other gods. So Hosea married Gomer. We're going to say Gomer. It's Gomer. But we're going to say Gomer today so, y'all, so I can help y'all. So y'all can remember this. Hosea married Gomer, the, the daughter of Diblam. That's definitely not how you say that. The blame. The blame. All, yeah, I, I'll teach you about it later. The emphasis is always on the second syllable in Hebrew. <laughs> the blame and she became pregnant and gave Hosea a son and the, and the Lord said name the child Jezreel for I'm about to punish King Jehu's dynasty to avenge the murders he committed at Jezreel in fact I will bring an end to Israel's independence I will break its military power in the Jezreel valley soon Gomer became pregnant again and gave birth to a daughter and the Lord said to Hosea, name that daughter. Um, Laruhama. I think that's right. Which means not loved. For I will no longer. <laughs> if your mama named you Laruhama, you're probably not loved. For I will no longer show love to the people of Israel or forgive their sins. But I will show love to the people of Judah. Lord Jesus, it's revelation right there. Amen. I will free them from their enemies, not with weapons, not with armies, not with horses, not with charioteers, but by my power as the Lord their God. And after Gomer has, had weaned Laruhamah, she said she again became pregnant and gave birth to a second son. And the Lord said, name him Le, Le, Lo Amy. Lo Amy, which means not my people. For Israel is no longer my people, and I am no longer their God. Yet the time will come. When Israel's people will be like the sands of the seashore, too many to count. Then at that place where they were told, you are not my people. And it was said to them, you, it will be said to them, you are the children of the living God. Then the people of Judah and Israel will unite together and they will choose one leader for themselves and they will return from exile together. Oh, that's good news right there. What a day that will be, the day of Jezreel. When God will again plant his people in his land. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. And we give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. Lord, today, Lord, help me help them, God. 
Help us to, to discuss a hard topic, Lord Jesus, in a loving way. Lord, we love you and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Do me a favor, high five three people and say it's going to be good today. It's going to be good today. It's going to be good today. You can have your seats, amen. 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 So I, I, I want to deal with uh, <laughs> what we just read. And I know for some people who are sort of maybe new to church or new to a church environment, and you read this right here and you say, now this is why I don't read the Bible. It's, it's, it's long and it's confusing. Hear me right here. It's long and it's confusing and it, it doesn't always make sense. And so you're looking at this text and you're trying to find uh, some semblance of common sense in this text. And you get to the first line, the first, uh, uh, essentially the second verse in the text, the first line, the Bible says, the word of the Lord came to Hosea. He said, go marry a prostitute. And for a lot of us, we'll get stuck right there. You know, you're a new Christian, you're reading the Bible, and the Lord, the word of the Lord came to Hosea, said, go marry a prostitute. Okay. Um, I think there's some other stories in here that I might need to read. It might be some other, <laughs> it might be some other text in here that I need to look at. And you might, you might just tell yourself, uh, we might as well just skip over this whole uh, book of Hosea. We might as well just skip over this whole book. But I'm telling you now that if you skip this book, you're going to miss something. You're going to miss something great. God is doing something wonderful in here. But God always does, so, does something wonderful in the midst of some chaos. God always does something good in your life in the midst of some trouble, in the midst of some drama. And a lot of times what we do is we run from the drama, but if you, if you really just in the middle of the drama looked around, you probably find that God was doing something good in your life. You probably find that God was doing something wonderful in your life. In the midst of the drama, in the middle of the situation, you'll probably find that God is about to bless your life. But, but we find Hosea right here, and he's in the middle of a difficult position. See, at this point, the children of Israel have already been in exile from their, their land. They've been running from the land that was promised to them, what, they call, what we call the promised land. They've been running from that land for about 120 years. And they're scattering all over the place. And, they, and, they've, and they've stopped paying attention to God. And they've stopped paying attention to Jesus. And they've stopped lifting their hands in worship. And they've even stopped uh, uh, bringing in their sacrifice. They've stopped doing the, doing, doing the normal stuff. Stopped attending GC3U. Stop. Oh, um, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to help you today. Amen. Stop. It used to be that I was always available to do what God called me to do. I was in a hurry to do what God wanted me to do, but something happened and I stopped doing it. I stopped being involved. I stopped being connected. I started feeling a sense of disconnection and God is literally feeling a sense of disconnection between himself and his people. And so much so that he picks a preacher from the time. That preacher's name is Hosea. And he tells this preacher, he says, hey, man, I need you to go marry a harlot. I need you to go marry a prostitute. Now, why is it that we already, it's already hard to preach in this season. When everybody's running, every, nobody's paying attention, nobody's loving on God, nobody's giving God the glory. No, there are no major altar calls, people. It's hard, hard, hard preaching for the church of Hosea. And on top of all that, God said, go marry a hoe. I mean, uh, <laughs> go marry a prostitute. It's usually, it's, it's oftentimes when we're in the most difficult positions of our life, God calls us to do an impossible task. When we are already in a hard situation, God calls us to just take a step a little bit further. God calls us in a time in a time that we're out on the water and the boat is beating against our ship and everything is going crazy. God says, okay, now get out of the boat and walk. Wait a minute, man. I was scared in the boat. <laughs> you want me to now get out the boat? Yes, I want you because you'll never learn what it's like to walk on water until you can take a step out of this 
boat. So even in your hard situation, I'm going to call you to do an impossible task. God will call you right in the middle of your, uh, your hard situation and ask you to do something impossible. It's already hot and sweaty. The sun's been up. We've been out here dealing with these 5,000 people all day long. And then Jesus says, okay, now let's feed them. Hey, man, I'm already out here doing vacation Bible school with these people. <laughs> We're already doing a street revival. It's hot out here, man. It's everything. And now you're telling the people to sit down and now I got to feed them? Why, why does God always feel like he has to call me to just go a little bit further? Isn't this that I'm doing good enough? You're telling me what I'm doing is not good enough? I love, I, I, I like, I, I love my, my kids. They're not here this morning, so I can talk about them freely. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's like that. It's like that with my children oftentimes. I'll be like, man, you got a D? And they'll be like, I passed? <laughs> well, <laughs> I get that, but I'm not going to congratulate you for not failing. You don't deserve congratulations for not failing. You don't get the glory, thank you, Jesus, connected to your relationship with God for just doing what everybody else does. You don't get the glory connected to your relationship with God for just surviving. I, I'm, I'm sick and tired of going to church services where it's a survivor's meeting. And everybody in there is just surviving. Oh, Lord, I'm just making, I'm just making. Oh, I don't know this old back. I don't know if I, oh, this old belly, these old, they, they, they. man, get up from there. I don't want to go to a church where it's just a survivor's meeting. I want to go to church where the people run into the building. They can't wait to get to the altar. They can't wait to get into a relationship with God. They can't wait to get into a relationship with you. They can't wait for you to sit next to them so they can introduce, say, hey, I'm Pastor Dante. It's so good to meet you. Tell, tell me what you're doing this weekend. Yeah. 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 This, is the, this is the type of church that I want to be a part of where it's not just average. Hosea walks up to his average church and God says, okay, now I need to call you away from just average. I need you to do something extraordinary. I need you to do something extraordinary. And a lot of times when I'm in a difficult time, God will call me to do something extraordinary. When, I, when I'm trying to save some money, God will call me to sow into the kingdom. God, I'm trying to put this to the side. He said, yeah, I know. So go ahead and just sow $50. But God, I'm, I don't have $50. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, when God is, when I'm, when I'm trying to be in a season of, oh, thank you, Jesus. When I'm trying to be in a season of reserve, God, God calls me to a season of giving. When I, when, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. When I'm trying to be, uh, it's bountiful in my life, and I'm thanking God for all the blessings in my life, God calls me to fast. I'm like, wait a minute, though, the, the church picnic is, this is usually the time for me personally when I begin explaining to God why this is really not a good time for what he's asking me to do. I will do it, but it's just not the right, if you could just come to me a little later, I don't, I don't mind marrying this pro prostitute, but right now. Like as if I could just wait until the final, the, uh, the, this final year was over at, 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 in my school. Or if I can just wait until, God, if you could just wait until the, the, the actual NBA finals are over, that'd be great. <laughs> but the truth is, God often calls us to inconvenient tasks at inconvenient times. God calls Hosea to an inconvenient task at an inconvenient time. He calls Hosea to, at a, to an inconvenient and impossible task at an inconvenient time. And then he says this. He says, he says I need you to go do something that's difficult. It made me think about seed. <laughs> because the truth is, you have to prepare the ground for the seed. You don't have to prepare the seed for the ground. And a lot of times what we think God is doing in our life is to prepare the seed for us. 
But the truth is, he's preparing us. Okay. Trying to make this make sense to you guys. See, in order to put the seed in the ground, you got to till up the ground. And so God will put you in a situation where there's some tilling required. There's some tilling required. And what you think, you, you think you're working on your blessing, but really God's working on you for your blessing. See? It's not that the blessing is being prepared for you. It's really that you are being prepared for the blessing. And the strenuous time and the hard time and the tough time and the difficult time is this time where I'm chilling up the ground. Because I don't often equivocate how this equals that. How does marrying this? Y'all know what I want to say. Right? How is that going to help me later on? How's that going to help my church plant? How's that going to help us grow? I can see it right now. Everybody sitting down at the church of Hosea, and all of a sudden, the first lady walks in. <laughs> the first lady walks in, and she sits on the front row. And the truth is, the, the Bible says that God told Hosea to marry a prostitute, and Hosea chose Gomel. Hear me. That means she was a known prostitute. He knew who to pick. It's easy to say for God so loved the world when you think the world is the trees and the breeze and the, and the beautiful animals, the little baby lambs and all the little children. But when I say God loves the murderers, God loves the prostitutes. God loves the dope dealers. God loves the ones who are sick and the ones who are healed. God loves the hypocrites. Welcome to God Chase us today. God loves each and every one of us. And the truth is, it's easy for us to talk about Gomel when she walks up into the church. But what if each one of us was wearing our sin across our chest? What if we were known for what we, what if somebody sat next to you and it just said adulterer on your shirt? They're like, hey, God bless you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move over here. <laughs> what if it says sinner on your shirt? What if it said molester on your shirt? What if it said, what if it said with your, oh, 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 that's too deep for you? What if it just said liar, hypocrite? Because I said I would do something. This is the small print. I said I would do something, but I never ended up doing what I said I would do. And therefore, I'm untrustworthy in the house of God. But high five me anyway. It's easy to say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. When we don't realize that the world is all of it. It's everybody. It's all, it's, it's you. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, thee and they that dwell within it. Thee, yes, thee. The dope dealer. The prostitute, the liar, the stingy person. Yeah, I'm talking to you too. The indwell, and they that dwell within it. The old man walks up in the church and she's the first lady. Boy, you talking about hard to have a church. The truth about it is, is this, and I want to I wanna give these three points, and I'm really going to wrap it up right here because I wanted to give an introduction to this series that we're going to be going through where we talk about the unlovables. See, there are some people huh, that are easy to love. There are some, listen, when your baby is three months old, they're easy to love. When they're three years old, it's harder. When they're 13, it's even harder. When they're 23, it gets better again. It gets better because they gets better they go they go away and you only see them <laughs> but the truth is God loves the unlovables 
God loves the unlovable, unlovables. And until we can co- grab that concept, until we can deal with that concept, we won't be able to go forward as a church. Until we can understand that God loves everybody. It don't matter how, if you have purple stockings or purple hair, God loves you. It doesn't matter what you look like. Red, yellow, black, and white, they're all precious in his sight. God loves you. Even the Gomez, even the Gomez who show up right in here, who sit down right in here. The only difference, oh. (laughs) Be easy right here. Because there are some prostitutes who sit on the back row because they know they're a prostitute. And there are some that will sit on the front row and wipe their mouth and say, I have done nothing. And I don't want to be the kind of prostitute that doesn't know I'm a prostitute. But the truth is, no matter what, God loves me because God loves the unlovables. God, God tells him, he says, go out and, and marry this young lady. And he does it. Oh, boy, let's just deal with that for a second. Can you do what God is calling you to do in this season? He called Hosea to marry her. He's just calling you to invite her to church. He called Hosea to attach himself to her, to, to, to become connected with her, and to even have children with her, but you won't even speak to her. The Bible says that Hosea, he, he, he became so attached to her, so connected to her, to where his name and her name, they go together. When you talk about this love story, you talk about Hosea and most people say Gomer. Hosea and Gomer. Hosea and Gomer. Hosea and Gomer. You, you, can you be so faithful to God, oh Lord Jesus, that you'll tie yourself to something that's not pretty, to something that's difficult, to something that's ugly, so that God can get glory from your The Bible says he loved her, and we'll talk more about this as the series goes on. He loved her so much that they had three children together. Three children with hard-to-pronounce names. The Bible says that they, he began to name those children, and God told him exactly what to call those children. He, he, he He said, first, call the first one Jezreel. Now, Jezreel represents a place, thank you, Jesus, where a place of destruction and a place of disaster. It used to be a beautiful valley, but it represents a place of of, of slaughter. And we'll we'll get more into that uh, as we go further into the message. But the truth is, a a lot of times, you're not just known for being cute in church. You're not just known for what you wear to church. You're known for the disaster that you bring. Some people show up to church and they bring a disaster with them. <laughs> oh, we don't want to talk about those people. Some people, you see them coming and here you, here comes, here comes Jezreel. Here comes a mess. Here comes a disaster. It used to be beautiful. It used to be wonderful. It used to be great, but now it's a mess. A lot of people are going to show up in this church in a Jezreel state. They're going to show up. They know how to get dressed. They know how to be cute. They know how to, but really on the inside, they're a disaster. How, how can you minister to that person when they show up in a Jezreel state, when they show up in a cute dress and in the right shoes with the red bottoms, but they are a disaster on the inside? Can you deal with them? The next one, Laruhama. The, the Bible says, not loved. People show up in church every day now. And they, they don't feel loved. I was talking to one of the ministers here, um, Tremaine. We were talking about, she was talking about how she was uh, in, a, in a group having a discussion about why people don't go to church. And a lot of times, I, 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 I didn't really, I, I wanted to let her speak, so I, but I really, I went to sleep with that last night, and I thought about that a lot. A lot of people don't go to church just because there's no love in the church anymore. It's a show. It's a, it's, a, it's a talent show. It's a fashion show. It's a, it, and that's all it is. And, and at some point, when you walk in that place and you don't feel any love, if you can walk into a church, listen, I have a problem when you can walk into a church and never get touched. 
not, not, not touch spiritually or physically. I can walk into this place. I'm not going to name this church, but I walked into a very famous church, a very big, famous church with thousands of people there. And I, I was late. <laughs> so keep it 100. Maybe they had another time where they would have met me and loved on me and appreciated me or whatever, but I walked into that church. The, 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 the foyer was so, it was so beautiful and big and vast, and it was empty. People walked past me. It was a church service. They had church service. Everybody was in the sanctuary, I guess. I walked into the sanctuary. There were some seats empty in the back. I sat in the back. I stayed for the entire service. When the service was over, they said amen. I got up and left. Nobody spoke to me. Nobody talked to me. Nobody hugged me. Nobody high-fived me. Nobody said anything to me. I couldn't believe it. How is this possible? That thousands of people can be in this place and I don't feel touched. I remember the, the, a story of Pastor James about Jesus walking in the midst of thousands of people. He was walking in the midst of thousands of people. And the Bible says that he said, wait, stop, everybody, stop moving. Somebody touched me. And the disciples said, man, everybody touched you. Man, what are you talking? It's thousands of people here. You're telling, me, you're telling me you weren't touched until this moment? He said, no, I never felt a touch until this moment. Somebody touched me. How is it possible that you are walking with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and he never felt touched? Same way it's possible for Laruhama to sit in the back of this church and never get touched. Never get touched, never get hugged, never get held, never get appreciated, never even get asked, what's your name? How you spell that? I don't want to be the type of church, Hassan, where, where Laruhama can come sit in the back here and not feel loved. She can come, she can enter into these doors and not feel love. She can, we go crazy. I fuss at people all the time for, for this simple reason. Everybody that comes through that door should be loved, hugged, and appreciated. Why? Because I don't want to have a baby named Laruhama. I don't want to have anybody walk in here and not feel loved. Last baby, her name is, uh, his name is Loemi. Loemi. Loemi means not my people. Not my people. Another reason why people don't come to church is because they don't feel like they belong to the church and they don't feel like the church belongs to them. So they come in here, but they say, these are not my people. These are not my people. I'm not connected to these people. I don't know these people. And honestly, I, 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 I don't want to know them because the truth is they, they, they can see past your facade. See, we come to places like this, we come to cathedrals like this, and what we do is we think that there's nobody in here that's messed up like we're messed up. So, what I have to do is pretend that I'm not messed up, and so you got a bunch of people pretending that they're not messed up for the sake of the messed up person they're sitting next to. Of course you don't feel like nobody is yours, and you're not anybody's. I tell our staff all the time, they're, they're, somebody is going to walk in here and, and they're going to be you. What do you mean they're going to be me? They're going to be you, exactly you, who you are, your fears, <laughs> thank you Jesus, your insecurities, your problems, your issues, they're going to have them all. And the question is, can you find you so you can minister to you? That is the whole thing. Can you find you so you can reach you? This is how we, this is what church is all about. It is not, thank you Jesus, it is not about us coming together and having a good time and laughing and singing and doing all this wonderful stuff and never reaching anybody else. So that the only people who come to church are people who grew up in church. I, 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 I got an issue, I got an issue, I got an issue, I got an issue, Pastor Kevin. Because that's all, we, that's, this, is, this is what we've turned into. Our church is just 
procreate inside our churches. And the only people who go to our churches, there's no longer any more conversions. There's no longer any people who said, I never went to church and I don't belong to anybody because I don't feel love and I feel like I'm a disaster on the inside. And there's not one person who connect with me and deal with me and wrap their arms around me and say, hey, I, I love you even though you're whatever you are. Because the truth is, look, look, look. The truth is, look, 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 look. And we get to the point in our lives where we can show ourselves, show our true selves so that we can help somebody else. So that when Jezreel walks into the doors of God chasers, or when Luami walks into the doors of, uh, of God chasers, or when Laruhamai walks into the doors of God chasers, she'll feel like she's loved. She'll feel like she's appreciated. She'll feel like she's cared for. Can you marry that prostitute? This is this is this is what I want to deal with in this in this, in this entire series. I'm gonna I want to deal with a, a couple of different parts, but the truth is this: three 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 quick points, and I and I'm done. Three quick points. I want I want you to write this down. The first thing is this: God loves the unlovable. He loves he loves he loves he loves he loves the unlovable. He loves the person that you can't stand. I thank God that he loves the person that you can't stand because I might fall into that category one day. And I thank God that even though you can't stand me, he still... I thank God that even though you can't deal with me, he can. I thank God that even though you can't wrap your arms around me because of whatever your problem is or whatever you're going through, I serve a God who can wrap his arms around me and say, Dante, even though you're a disaster and even though you're unloved, I still love you I serve a God who will wrap his arms around me even when you want God loves the unlovable the Bible says the Bible says that Jesus was a friend of sinners and publicans the people that you wouldn't hang with sinners and tax collectors the people that you wouldn't hang with he did the people that you wouldn't kick it with we talked about in GC3U we talked about all these disciples and we're going to finish up this week talking about Judas but I love the story of Judas yes I do I love the story of Judas because Judas had every opportunity Jesus loved him to the very end to the point where he washed his feet God loves the unlovable I know you're going to cheat on me I know you're going we're going to read more about Hosea because Gomer left him. He married her. He was faithful to her. She, tr- she tried to be faithful to him. But her heart was still for the street. God loves you still. Even when you turn away again and again and again. You get it right. You get it right. And then you start doing right. And then all of a sudden you turn away again. Your heart is still over here. Your heart is still over here. God is calling you to this place, but your heart is still over here. And I, I thank God that we serve a God that will chase you. And he'll chase you. See, this is the beautiful thing about chasing God. You're chasing God, and he's chasing. God loves the unlovable. The second thing, y'all, y'all ready? You're called to love the unlovable. The Bible calls this the Great Commission. It says to go ye therefore to teach all nations, all nations, all nations, everybody, everywhere, every, everybody, no matter what language they speak, no matter what they look like, no matter what their skin color is, no matter what kind of music they like. That's why we sing all kinds of music here. Because the truth is God called us to reach as far as we can. God called us to love the unlovable. The people who, 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 who wouldn't fit in in other churches because the lights are on. God called us to love on them. God called us to love the unlovable. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what God called us to do. Number two, God loves the unlovable. God, number one, God loves the unlovable. Number two, God called us to love the unlovable. Number three, you ready? I'm done. You ready? Number three, you are the unlovable. (laughs) 
See, Pastor Kev, it's easy to associate yourself with Hosea in this story, but who said you were Hosea? It's easy to associate yourself with Hosea, and when God calls Hosea, he says, hey, go marry a prostitute, and you say, man, that's difficult. I can't believe God asked Hosea to marry the prostitute. That's the hardest part about this story, because it's so hard to understand how God would call Hosea to marry a preacher, a priest, somebody who was clean to marry a prostitute. You never assume that you might be the prostitute. See, the story is difficult when you assume that the priest is, is you and you had to marry that prostitute. But the story gets a little more palatable when you are the prostitute praying for a priest. When you are the prostitute praying for a priest to love you. When you are the uh, disaster, but you're saying somebody's just loved me, man. Somebody care about me. I wish somebody was concerned about me. The story is different when you are the... Yeah, God loves the unlovable. God has called you to love the unlovable. But point number three, because you are the unlovable. Raise your hand if you've sinned in here. Put it down. That disqualifies you from relationship with God. Immediately, one sin, Adam sinned once, one sin, and was put out of the garden. He was disqualified. But the Bible says through one man's sin, sin entered into the world. But through one man's sacrifice. See, get this. You not Hosea, you the hoe. Hosea is Jesus Christ. The actual Hebrew term Hosea translates into Yeshua, which means Jesus. And we pronounce it as Jesus. Hosea is our Jesus. I just need to be saved. I need to be saved. There's somebody that you know that just needs to be saved. Don't assume that you are Hosea. I want to call, I want to make a call today to the people, thank you Jesus, who just want to be saved. I'm not perfect. I haven't, I'm not the priest in this situation. I need salvation. I need Jesus. I don't, I'm not Jesus. I need Jesus.